so upset right now. That you're not here? We're upset. I, well, that too, okay? <laughs> I said that you guys were not gonna hook me into another season. <laughs> What's gonna happen? I have done nothing with my life this entire week because I have been watching this show. Literally. How many episodes did you get to watch? I watched all nine, okay? If you can tell somebody at Netflix, go ahead and run me that last episode. That's how deeply I'm <laughs> I think you got a special link. You got a special link. I won't tell okay, anybody. Did I just snitch on myself? Yeah. Okay, but that's it. By the way, this looks like your audition for next season. Like the, I love that. I love that you took the time to do this. Thank you. Well, look, if we didn't get you hooked, then we're not doing our job. So very true. I am a Love Is Blind super fan. Okay, even played the game, the <laughs> dating the card game. Yeah, yes. Let you know the level of fan I am. Well, good. But look, this season. If I hear the word real world one more time, like it could be a whole drinking game, how much I hurt this. And I really wanted to ask, like, why do you feel like being in the pot for those days? Why does it, why do you think it feels as though that they've been kind of just plucked out of the real world almost into like this mini simulation? Like what is the difference that happens when they actually get to see everyone from the pods? That's a really, I have to commend you on like really like thinking about that because we get asked all kinds of questions about the show and that's a fascinating one because they have to like switch off one part of their brain, I think, and then like relearn another part, which is that, you know, just when you watch them talking to each other, they're looking to, and they're listening and there's no cell phone to text. There's no TV to turn. Not that you do that, baby. I would never. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, there's no distraction. So you're just like fully invested. So you almost feel like you're not in the real world. Even right now when we're talking to you, there's one, two, three, four, five, six people in this room and you're aware of that. I'm aware that they're over here. I'm aware that there's a camera. I'm a, you know what I mean? But when you get into these cozy pods, you feel like you're in this It does feel like another planet. It's like another planet. And, and I think because they've seen it on TV already and they've seen season one, um, I think that like when, when they get there, they're so excited to be there in person, you know, and, and to experience it for themselves and, and it's so excited to, to get the dating started. And it's just, it, it's like a, it's like a fascinating little world. But I think that I give it really a lot of credit to Kinetic and Netflix for creating an environment that allows the person to truly be diving into this experiment in any way. I don't want to use the word vulnerable because I don't want to make another drinking game for you, but the word <laughs> vulnerable and real world could probably, you'll be wasted by episode three. <laughs> but um, it's true. You know, when you put all of your inhibitions aside and you're in this cozy, safe place, and if you feel safe, they know that they are there with someone who also wants that next level of commitment. They're not at a bar trying to talk to a guy and then, you know, getting let down. There is some heartbreak, but it's it's through a process that they've chosen. So, um, so I think to answer your question in the most roundabout way, we've created such a great environment for them, and they're tapping into something that they probably, you know, maybe been suppressing or, or or not wanting to feel comfortable with, and now they get to just be themselves. So but they another, feel like they're on another planet. I mean, the the not so real world planet. That's what we're just gonna call it. <laughs> but I mean, one of the things that also too, it made me think about how in dating we kind of have this representative. Not necessarily, it's not a hundred percent of who we are. It's the person that we think will be most desirable to the other person, and we kind of get to see this while watching the season in the pods. And even sometimes it will be, you know, when everyone gets to meet the parents that it kind of feels like everyone's on a job interview and they're kind of presenting one, a different version of themselves than what they truly believe. Like, can you speak a little bit more like you watching the season? Like, where do you think that comes from to present the representative? Is it because they know it's going to be on TV or is it something deeper? Well, I think all we... What we what... What we try to convey in that very first speech when we come into the into the lounge and talk to them, and, and I always try to say the same thing every season, and I, I believe it every season, is this experiment works if you are honest with yourself and you're honest with the person on the other side of that wall. If you're trying to be something you're not, then you're, then you're doing a disservice to the entire experiment, right? So um, we really try to encourage them to not play a role, not play a part, not be somebody they're not, because that's not what this is about. This is about 
finding someone and allowing someone to find you for who you truly are on the inside. And, and, and you know, it's a unique only to this show and this, exp and, you know, this experiment. That opportunity to, doesn't exist in the, in the conventional dating world. So most of the time, I feel like people take that seriously and, and they're there for that, you know, that reason. They're there to find what they haven't been able to find in the conventional dating world. And, and the opportunity you know, to do that um, is there if you're honest with yourself and honest with, uh, you know, with each other. So. We hear constantly, well, when we've met with season one and season two, that um, they all wish that they tapped into themselves sooner. So um, I will say that's something that they're, that I think hit in season three, um, like Colleen and specifically Colleen, she, to your point, everyone's like, what do you do? She's like, I'm a ballet dancer. And then she ended up, you know, having her struggles and she said, is it because I'm saying the same thing I say out? And she's like, why is no one giving me a chance? Am I, am I self-sabotaging myself? What am I doing? And she found her whole self in this whole journey. And she had high highs and low lows. And she was like truly actually working it out because she's never had to. She just meets people and they see her and she's like, I dance ballet. And so when there's the pod, she had to kind of renegotiate her own emotions. And... Um, and I think people are really relating to that journey and saying, gosh, that's what I do. I always put up this front that I think is, it's just how we were wired, you know? Um, but if we all take time to actually dig into who we are, um, I think we'd be pleasantly pleased and surprised at the inner beauty we all have and just have the confidence to portray that externally. Look, I wish I had a whole day to talk to y'all because clearly I have 15 million questions I still didn't get to ask. But I just want to thank you for speak, taking time out of your day to speak with me. And I'm seeing My nothing pleasure. but love and light both your ways. Thank, thank you so much. you as well. Okay. Enjoy those last episodes. I, I sure will. <laughs> <laughs>